Hello and welcome back to the OTB channel. Have you fancied having a play with a, a window manager rather than a desktop environment? But what's put you off is the amount of manual configuration that most window managers require until you've got them exactly as you want them. Well, you no longer have to worry about that. There's a new kid on the block called Instant OS. And today we're going to have a look at that. See you after the intro. Okay, welcome back. So you all know that uh, I've become a little bit of a Tyler holic and I really, really like using tiling window managers now. I didn't at first, but it's grown on me, and I'm a convert. And my window manager of choice at the moment is DWM. But I will admit, one of the things that could put people off is the fact that you generally have to, you start with a basically a system that does nothing more than open up a window and it's down to you to configure it and to build in the applications that you want and to configure all your key bindings and initially it can take a while now i'll be the first to admit that for me that's part of the appeal i love doing all that messing and getting under the hood and getting a system exactly as i want but I also realise that there are many of you out there who just like to install something and get on with whatever you're going to do. And there's recently been a new kid on the block uh, released called Instant OS, which has its roots in DWM, but it's also very different to DWM. It is a tiling window manager, but... It can also be mouse-driven just as easily as it can be driven by the keyboard. And it comes configured out of the box. In fact, it's actually quite hard to, to get under the hood and play with the thing to configure it exactly as you'd like because it's designed for people who just want to get something up and running as fast as possible. Now, I should say this, this window manager kind of came into my frame of reference when I... I watched uh, DistroTube DT doing a review some time ago, and he absolutely destroyed it. Um, but then he made a, a, another video shortly after, kind of apologizing to the developer, as it seemed that a lot of the problems he was having with lagginess and the graphics were, were actually due to it running Invert Manager. So I thought, well... It's certainly worth having a look at now to to see how it's come on. It's still at beta stage, so not everything's going to work. I would expect some things to be broken, and I'm going to be quite gentle with it because it's hard to criticise things when they're still at beta stage. But let's whip over to the Instant OS website. We'll move to the combined screen and uh, have a look and see what they say about it. So here we are at uh, the Instant OS website, and uh, I think it's quite a striking website. I, I like the look of it. Uh, it appeals to, to my sense of what a website should look like. Uh, quite plain, quite simple, uh, but it gets its point across. And as we go down, um, basically it tells us it's a new window manager and it just works from everything to wi-fi to volume to brightness etc everything's set up it's power user friendly so not necessarily uh designed for brand new users and and i think i'd agree any window manager only setup is is not going to be for a new user it's going to be for somebody who's been using Linux for a little while and perhaps wants to try something new. It's lightweight um, and it's got keyboard and mouse and touch support built in. They do make the point, though, it's still in an early beta, so, you know, we're not going to expect everything to work. Let's have a look at the About page, uh, and it tells us it's based on Arch. It's not a fork, this. Um, 
if it was an entire distro in its own right, we, we, we would call it a fork. But it's basically Arch Linux with a new window manager. I would assume the window manager will eventually become, well, part of the AUR or something like that. Um, it uses suckless uh, software, partly, but it's not a suckless distro. Um, you know, they've got their own uh, applications here, instant window manager, instant lock, instant menu. Apparently, they started out as suckless forks, but uh, currently they contain forty only 40% or less of the original suckless code. So it's its own thing, which I'm always pleased to see. If it's just about theming, I would say, well, what's the point? But th this seems to have something special about it. This is meant to give us a new experience in a window manager, and... Uh, Great, I take my hat off to them. What about documentation? Yeah, they've got some basic documentation here, including uh, a listing of all the key bindings, which we will get used to when we get there. But for now, let's leave this as is, and let's get on and install it. I've just gone to the standard download link up here. Uh, where are we? And I've downloaded the ISO, which is the latest beta. Right, so uh, I've booted the Instant OS uh, ISO uh, in VirtualBox using my standard settings, and it booted fine, and it seems to have booted to full screen. And I'm initially greeted by, by this dialogue, which I think is really nice. Virtual machine detected. Would you like to switch to a 1080 resolution? Um, let's try the mouse first and see if I can just click on yes. And that seemed to work. And uh, first impressions, very clean. Um, I quite like the wallpaper. I don't know if that's some Rofia like menu that I'm greeted with. I think it's actually the instant uh, OS menu, uh, a, special, uh, a special application that's been developed. But we'll look through the the operating system, or rather the window manager, once it's installed. Um, I see there's an option to install there, so I'm uh, minded to just get on with it and see how it works. So I'm going to go down there and hit on install. I should say that first impressions, being a DWM user, I can see the similarities to DWM straight away, but we'll we'll explore that in more detail once I've started. Okay, so we're beginning the installation, and it's preparing it. Please wait. So I'll wait. I thought it was worth showing you the installation on this because uh, it's a little bit different, and it seems to be downloading installer dependencies. Welcome to the Instant OS installer. Can I use the arrow keys? Yeah, absolutely. Next. Right, select keyboard layout. So if I put UK... No, that doesn't seem to work. GB. Hmm. Let's just move down and see what we can find. Can't see a UK there. Let's go for other. Is that GB? There's GB. Okay, great. Language English. Uh, mirror location. UK. There we go. United Kingdom. So it's nice and fast. Right, so how do I want to sort the mirrors? Um, use arch ranking score recommended. Okay, let's do that. And I can see I've got a little notifier just popped up in the right-hand side. Is this system a virtual machine? Yes. Which hypervisor is being used? Well, it's in VirtualBox. Would you like to install VirtualBox guest editions? Yeah, why not? Uh, select region. Okay. So we're looking for Europe there, which is at the bottom. And London. This is quite smooth and fast, I have to say. Select the disk we want to install on. Well, there is only one disk. Uh, install on disk. This will delete all existing data. Okay. Set username. 
Okay, so it's not given me any option to do custom partitioning there. So we'll see what it ends up with. So username, we'll call it OTB as normal. Password. I was just hesitant then in case it showed everything up, but it isn't. Enter the name of this computer. Okay, OTB instant. That'll do. Edit advanced settings only if you know what you're doing. Well, in for a penny, in for a pound. Let's have a look. What do we want to do? Auto login? Not really. Plymouth? No, I don't want Plymouth. The kernel? I'm not going to select anything there. Okay, I'm not going to bother with that. Right, so the installation sur summary. Username OTB, it's set to Europe, English, London, keyboard layout other, I presume that's UK, target install drive, dev SDA, and it is BIOS, I've booted this in BIOS mode. Should installation proceed with these parameters? Let's just go for yes. The installation will now begin, it could take a while, click OK. Right. Um, I'm going to pause this and we'll come back once it's finished. Right. Well, I think we are finished. Um, so what I'm going to do, that was fairly quick, I have to say, is I'm going to shut this down. I'm going to have a little bit of a play to try and find my way around the system. And then we'll come back. Right. And we're back. So uh, first thing to say is I rebooted it. I manually shut down the virtual machine and I rebooted it and it was very obvious that it was broken. Things weren't working. Now, I know this is beta or even alpha software according to what it says up here, um, but I thought, okay, maybe it's something I've done. And so I reinstalled it and uh, I actually noticed that it said the virtual machine or, or, or the system will shut itself down once the installation is complete. So I went all the way to the end this time. Uh, and and it, it, it was clear that what I'd done is I'd thought, because there was no visual signs that anything was happening, that installation had finished. It clearly wasn't. You need to let this run all the way to the end it will then reboot itself. So the fault was mine, but it would have been good to have some sort of notification just letting me know, you know, what's happening and not to have just a standard screen looking as if nothing's going on. What else happened? Uh, yeah, I, I made a, a comment during the installation that there were didn't seem to be a way to set your own partitioning. Again, I was wrong when I was reinstalling. It just shows I need to read things properly. There was uh, an option when you're choosing your disk to choose an experimental option where you could actually do custom partitioning. So again, I need to be reading things. I think it's because it's so different and we're so used to the likes of Calamaris and it's just next, 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 next. But anyway, so I did that and uh, everything worked really well. So this is what we have now. Um, Instant OS. And I've had a little bit of a play around and it is different to what I've used before. In fact, it looks very much like DWM in a sense uh, you open uh, a terminal with super enter enter etc etc and you shut things down with uh, super Q and it's got a DWM look to it it's obviously got a system tray over here where you've got network manager that looks a bit clunky actually I don't think it's the right size that icon but again this is beta software um letting many things pass here um it's also a, got a little bit of a an awesome wm feel to it in as much as it it ha does actually have uh, a menu and there are many ways to do things on this so let's just look at uh, some of the basics it's telling us up here press space to launch an application and if i do that I get this GNOME 
looking thing. Now, you know my thoughts about GNOME, but for those who are used to using a graphical environment only, this could be quite nice. And you've not got a huge amount installed, but nevertheless, you can have a look at various things. So customize look and feel, for instance, that brings up LX appearance. And I quite like the fact that it's, it's arc dark. So let's just shut that down. Press the space bar again. Uh, the file browser is Nautilus. I don't know what it's got edit menu there for. I've obviously pressed something. No, I have not used Nautilus for years. And uh, when DT had a look at this, he thought it was a strange choice. But the developer uh, made some comment in a response video saying he chose Nautilus because amongst a whole range of other things, it, its search facility tended to be better than uh, other file managers. Doesn't mean that you can't install other file managers, but but nevertheless, um, it is what it is. One of the things that I did notice is if I go into the uh, config directory, I couldn't find uh, a configuration file to change the key bindings to my liking. I don't think this exists as things stand, but again, this is a system that's meant to be ready out of the box. So perhaps the people this is designed for aren't going to fiddle and hack around with their, with their config files because at the end of the day, this is what it is. Um, let's have a look at the key bindings as they stand. There's quite a useful link there on the menu to the key bindings. It opens a terminal, and you can see it's fairly straightforward. Uh, I would change a few if I could, but Superspace will open a text-based application launcher. Looks like Rofi to me. Could be customized D menu, but you know, so you can search for say Firefox, launch that, and it launches a browser, and then I'd just do Super Q to quit that. Okay, uh, or you can do super control space, and then you've got your, your D menu up here, which is great. So not just the application launcher, the GNOME thing, but you actually have uh, a couple of other options. You then have a number of layouts, grid layout, monocle layout, which is like full screen, and you've got your workspaces or rather tags up here. And if I wanted to switch to say tag two, I just do super two, super three, super four, or wherever I want to go. If I wanted to move uh, this terminal here to say tag two, I would do super shift two. And then if I move to two, there we go. And super shift one, it's gone back. Okay, so pretty standard, uh, the sort of thing that you're, that you're used to, really. Uh, I've only got a single monitor here, but super shift and uh, comma or full stop. Yeah, period. Seems strange, the word period, to describe a full stop, but it's US versus UK, I suppose. Switch focus, J and K. So if I open another window there, uh, that's obviously got focus at the moment. Uh, so if I go super K, yeah, or J, and you can switch switch focus back like that. Okay, what else have I got? Let's open another window. And yet another window. Why not? Let's open a few. Um, now, of course, I can't find uh, <laughs> my uh, quick key bindings reference. But I know if I hit super control and the full stop or the comma it will cycle through the different layouts i quite like the master and stack layout so that sort of works for me so let me start shutting some of these down what else does it say here um duh, 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 move window through stack so super control j and k okay so super control k Okay, it just switches it round. J, K. I'm not going to go through all of these uh, key bindings. You can have a look at these yourself, but it's actually quite nice to see this working. So 
and you'd soon get used to them. When I first moved to a tiling window manager, I really struggled to, to remember all the key bindings. What you tend to find is there's perhaps a dozen key bindings that you use all the time, and they soon become hardwired. And uh, if you need anything else, it, it's great to have this reference here. So let's just shut these down. I believe it's using the ST terminal, by the way. Um, terminal. So you can launch it from the menu uh, as well as just doing super enter. And we also have settings here. So if I open settings, it, it brings up this sidebar uh which looks a little bit like the budgie sidebar to me and uh you can pretty much have a play with everything i haven't got all um audio enabled on this at the moment what about the instant os so theming currently enabled yes or no okay potato i have no idea what potato is do you consider this PC a potato? <laughs> it's cut, currently disabled. I'm just going to come back from that. Edit the auto start script, which is empty at the moment, but if you want to add something to it, such as nitrogen, for instance, it would just be nitrogen followed by the ampersand, which uh, is great to see. Um, what else? Let's go back to settings. I'm sure there's a way to bring that up uh, quite quickly. Uh, the display, change display settings, make current settings permanent, change brightness, auto detect monitor uh, docking, high DPI or an external screen, good stuff, appearance, um, application appearance. I'm sure that's, uh, yeah, that's uh, LX settings again. Let's open up uh, the settings menu again. So appearance. What about wallpaper? Well, we've got a few things here. We've got generate new wallpaper. So let's click on that and see what happens. I don't think these wallpapers are actually installed on the system. I think when you hit generate wallpaper, it goes off and gets something from uh, Tinterweb. So that's quite nice. I like that. Um, but you also, on the wallpaper, have an option there to browse wallpapers. Now, when I first did this it actually opened a terminal and it started downloading wallpapers and once they were downloaded it opened up uh what is obviously nitrogen and let me apply that and close it and there we go if you want to go back to actually i'm not sure i do want to go back i really like that wallpaper if you want to go back to uh the instant OS um, wallpaper, I suppose you just do generate new wallpaper. Let's uh, continue to move through settings, though, while it's doing that. Uh, Bluetooth. Oh, there we go. We've got our new wallpaper. Do you know something? Uh, I'm going to go back to appearance wallpaper. I'm going to browse wallpapers, and I'm going to pick that one again. There we go. Right. What else is in the settings? Uh, keyboard, power. What happens if I do power? XFC for power manager is not running. Do you want to launch it now? I'll say no, but certainly if I had this installed on a laptop, I would be doing that. Default applications. Right, now this was one of the things that I think was missing on early versions, and he said it's not fully working yet, so... I'm not going to play around with this and expect it to work, but you can set your default browser, system monitor, terminal, file manager, application launcher, text editor. What about application launcher? Uh, what about... No, I'm not going to mess with this just in case we mess something up. I'm going to go back. It's a work in progress, but it's good to see that this is being actively worked on. What about anything else there? Language, time and date, printing, storage, dot files. So it tells you where all your dot files are, which is good. And what else? Settings. 
Advanced. Let's see what's under advanced. Oh, set up a firewall, TLP, the bootloader, etc., etc. So actually quite nice. I like the fact that as soon as you've not got an application uh, open on uh, one of your uh, tags, just hit the space bar and it opens this. I do not like, I have to say, the GNOME Teletubbies menu, uh, especially if it's set by default. But it isn't set by default. You know, you can use Rofi if you prefer, which I would. So having it there as an option, I don't really have an issue with. What happens if we hit, I've just noticed Control Center down here. Oh, right, Control Center just brings up that. Uh, XRNR, okay, so you can set your uh, XRANDA, which is great. Conky, I haven't actually seen Conky, I don't think. So let's see what happens if I run Conky. Hmm, not seeing anything. That's fine. I'm not overly keen on Conky anyway. Desktop session settings. Okay. Oh, automatically started applications. What do you want there? That's fine. Uh, Compton. Okay, I believe that's called PyCon now. HTOP. Let's see what it's doing. Right, it's running 391 uh, megs at the moment. To be fair, though, I've been opening and closing things constantly. When I first launched this, uh, after I'd reinstalled it and, and I, I opened HTOP, it was doing just over 200 megs. So pretty good. You expect it to climb a little bit uh, as you're opening and closing things. What else is here? Uh, default applications. Now, this was an item I couldn't get to work properly. Yeah, and it's crashed. But as I say, I'm not going to uh, blame it for that because this is, after all, a beta or indeed an alpha. It's got JG menu, which I presume is what this is. So that's fine. And anything else? Steam, okay, so for those of you who are gamers, it's got Steam on, uh, LSHW, network settings, QT5 settings, and just a thing called settings, which presumably will bring up that again. So there's not a huge amount installed, but uh, this is pretty good so far. I, I like it. It is, of course... Um, based on Arch, so I should be able to do a sudo pacman syy and it's syncing the repos and there is an instant OS repo there as well of course I wonder if yay is installed yay syy yay is installed by default as well so let us uh, do st spacebar pamac, uh, pamac manager. And there you go. We've got our standard pamac. Okay, so that's all I'm going to look at on this so far. Um, it's early days for it, of course, but I think it's coming on quite nicely. So let's go and have a chat. Okay, so that's Instant OS. And I can just see some of the comments uh, that I'm going to get on this. Um, you're going to have the Suckless fans saying, oh, that's not what DWM's meant to be about. And, you know, the whole point of tiling window managers is that you build it up yourself and you configure it yourself and you get the system you want. And then there's going to be others that say, well, that's not going to appeal to Windows users, is it? Uh, I don't know why that's always used as a criticism. I don't care if it appeals to Windows users or not. Sorry, is that controversial? I really don't care. Um, I liked it. I have to say I liked it. I think for an early beta, and from what I first saw on DT's video, it's, it's come on in leaps and bounds. And uh, would I use it? Probably not, because I'm the sort of person who likes to get down and dirty and configure my own uh, window manager. 
But do I think there's a gap in the market for it? Absolutely, I do. I think there's lots of people out there who uh, are interested in tr uh, trying a tiling window manager or just a window manager only setup. And they would appreciate the fact that this doesn't force you to be keyboard driven right from the get go, that you can use uh, graphical applications and a standard menu if you want. And uh, generally speaking, I, I think it's coming together. And if development continues at the pace it's going, I, I, I think it's going to really start to stand out from the crowd. There are some things that I personally would have preferred to be different. Uh, I would have liked an easy way to change my key bindings. But given that it's got DWM somewhere in the background, I can also appreciate that that's probably quite difficult for a new window manager that is designed to work out of the box. Because if you just had a standard uh, C file, a config.h file, and you made changes to the key bindings, you'd then have to recompile it yourself, and that's probably something that they want to avoid. But you can get used to key bindings, and uh, that really would be the only thing that I would like to see changed. I would like to see some quick way of being able to change the key bindings to, to my own liking. I like the fact that it's based on Arch. Of course I do. I'm an Arch fan. And... Uh, I really don't have much bad to say about this. I made a few mistakes uh, on the installation, and I perhaps wouldn't have made those mistakes if I'd read what was being presented in front of me. Um, but also, I thought the installation had finished, and it hadn't finished, and, and so when I launched it, nothing worked. You've got to wait for this thing to install, and then it will reboot itself. So that's it for today, guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed this quick look at Instant OS. Uh, please come and join me on Library and the Facebook group. And most importantly here, I'd like to say a big thank you to my patrons who are making this channel all it can be. That's Corbinian Shilderman, Robert Boudreaux, Gary Moore, Aristoteles Papa Giorgio, take a breath storm pick stephen cross mike long david bird entropy uk richard wade tiger philip sb forest road scott russell and patrick dano Whew, there's quite a lot of you now thanks very much guys really appreciate your support sorry we're still on uh, one video a week uh it's been manic at work guys and uh i've been spending every spare moment trying to set up this new studio which is why this is quite a short video because i've i've got some more work to do there so uh i'll see you next weekend and have a great week